Um, so in this example, let's just try to hit through these. I'm going to go through them a little bit quicker. So if I do um, miss you on something or you don't understand, please just raise your hand and let me know. But step number one, we're going to write in the zeros. So the zeros in this case, ladies and gentlemen, are your real x-intercepts or your, z your solutions in this case that we have or zeros will be uh, negative 3, negative 2, and 4. Oops, I didn't write that in there. Write the real zeros. And that's kind of really important. I wrote that in last time. But we're finding the real zeros. The real zeros are the x-intercepts, right? Everybody agree with me? Negative 3, negative 2, and 4 are the real zeros, correct? OK. Now, remember, the degree is the same as the number of real zeros, right? So you could say, well, then the degree is 3. Because that's the next question, determine the degree. So we could say the degree is 3. However, we know there's another way to double check that. And the way is to count the number of turning points, where the graph goes from increasing to decreasing, or decreasing to increasing. The number of turning points plus 1 is the degree. So if I count the number of turning points, 1, 2, 3, 4. So therefore, my degree is 5. Now, how does this make sense? If I have a degree of 5, that means there's five total solutions. I have three x-intercepts, which tells me there's three real solutions. So I have five total solutions, three real solutions. Then what? How, I'm missing two solutions. What do those two solutions have to be? Irrational. Not so much irrational, because irrational are still real. What is undoing real? complex. Remember i, right? We have two solutions that are complex. We don't know what those are right now. We're not going to figure them out, but we have two solutions that are i. Then we need to determine if our leading coefficient is positive or negative. So we look at the behavior of the graph. It's rising left, falling right. If you guys go back to your M behavior chart, you would know that has a negative, negative leading coefficient. And we know that the degree would have to be 5 as well, or odd. All right, next thing is writing the polynomial in factored form. So in factored form, we'd have y equals uh, x plus 3, x plus 2, and x minus 4. And then make sure we remember that that has a negative leading coefficient. So we'd put a negative in front. Can you see that? OK. Number four, absolute max, absolute min. Is there any absolute maximum point on this graph? No, no because the graph extends indefinitely to infinity, right? Is there any absolute min? No. No. So I'm just going to say for both of those, that's none. Number five, let's look at relative max. What are some other turning points that represent maximum points? Well, we have negative 1, 3, and 3 comma 5. So a relative max is negative 1, 3, and 3, comma 5. And number 6 is, oops, and our relative min. Wait, why do you have Because they both turning points represent a maximum point within a certain range. I'm not, I don't want to get too deep into the definition, but if you can just think of when you look at a turning point, if it represents a maximum kind of point within a certain range of values, it's a relative max. Our relative min is it going to occur at 0, uh, 0, 1, and negative 2.5, negative 2. Claire, do you have a question? Um, why wouldn't the absolute max be 3 and 5? Three. Oh, because what about this point? Is this point higher than 3.5? Yeah. And then is this point higher than that one? It's never ending, right? You're always going to have another point higher. So that's why we say there's no absolute max. Okay. 